Hello, everybody. A little bit louder. I know you guys are hungover, but you got to start it over again right about now. All right, 2016, Nam. And I've said this before, and I'm sure you guys are going to hear it again, but isn't it pretty cool being in the baddest booth in the entire show right now? Yeah. So let's, we could have, a, this is not going to be the normal little presentation type thing. We're going to do a few things here, but let's give it up for the one and only, one of my best friends on the planet, and a great ESP ambassador, and, you know, creator of this thing called Thrash. Give it up for fucking Gary Holt. <laughs> Exodus movie. Yeah.
don't challenge me. That's way too easy. Impact. Strike of the beast. Strike of the beast. Strike of the beast. and stuff like that. We want to open this up because one thing we like to do is, you know, hanging out here, a lot of people have a lot of questions but they normally don't get the chance to be able to hang out with somebody like Gary. And now it's a chance to actually have these questions answered for you straight up. So if you guys want to hear a specific riff or something, let me know. But let's also, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions because we're talking about a you know, a guy who's been around here since, you know, 1981 in the thrash scene, creating the thrash scene, and now is a part of Slayer full time and Exodus, there's a lot to be asked. And there's a lot of people out there like yourselves that are aspiring to be musicians and do the same kind of thing with your career. So, let's start off with a couple of those. And who has a question out there? Okay, black shirt, straight in the back, sunglasses on your head, yes. Are you the question is, are you going to be writing on the new Slayer record because you can make this thing fucking awesome? <laughs> the new Slayer album? We just put out a new Slayer album. That, that's a years away. And uh, uh, How old will I be when that one happens? I don't know. We'll see, you know. I'm, I got no shortage of risk. Uh, Paul, get right there. Is it different now than practicing at Dan's studio in Oakland? Is it different now than practicing at Dan's studio in Oakland? Now, I'm also repeating this because this is on a live stream, so... The people uh, that are watching this at home. At the warehouse in Oakland? Yes, sir. I smoke a lot less methamphetamines. <laughs> <laughs> Proud to say. Uh, you know, yeah, that, those are like crazy times. And uh, the weirdest thing about rehearsing in that place is showing up when you are clean. <laughs> you, had to, you had to walk through fucking, you know, a field of walkers just to get to a, your room to practice. <laughs> What's you can, that? You can smell Bailoff cooking salmon steaks. Dude, Paul Bailoff was the master at the warehouse barbecue. All right, he'd use, we didn't have plates, he'd use cardboard. He'd rip up a box and serve you a chunk of steak on that shit. <laughs> That's very darkest hour. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. 
She said, why is it after I see you at so many shows I can never hear you, you need to tell Carrie to let you turn that shit up? What side of the stage you stand on? <laughs> Carrie's or mine? Which side? Stage left or stage right, brother? <laughs> yeah, the guitars are, span, are panned left and right. You gotta get, you gotta get over to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Jacket in the back, horns up. Do you ever have days where you have a hard time playing and how do you get through that? Do you ever have days where you have a hard time playing and how do you get through that? That's every day of my life. <laughs> um, you, I gotta warm up way more than I did when I was younger. Like, you know, like I, I, you know, and like when I'm up with Slayer, Carrie and I both, we start warming up at least an hour before the show, you know? And in the old days, you know, I, I would play for like five minutes, like when someone handed me a guitar and I'd go up and play it, but yeah. Uh, you know, it seems though as we get older, we tend to like write songs that are harder to play. I mean, uh, and uh, not making it easy on ourselves by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, you gotta make the arm burn. You know, it's like like any muscle, you gotta use it. You know, it's like be really easy if we were just playing like you know butt rock and and you know sitting there, you know. <laughs> What is the one riff that you wrote that is the hardest riff that is the most pain in the ass riff for you to play? What is the one riff that you wrote that is the hardest damn riff to play? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, let me see. I gotta think about it. Once again, it goes back to age. They all get harder. Uh, you know, um, I, I, there's riffs that I were, weren't hard when I was younger, and I go to play them now. And you know. Because uh, as time goes by, your, your playing develops, and it also, in its own way, it regresses. You know, because you start doing different picking patterns that you've mastered, and you got really killer now, and then you go back and listen to some of the stuff you did before, and it's harder, and you never used to have a problem with it back then. And for me, it's like down picking, you know? I used to down pick all day long, and, and now I really got to work at it, and I have little cheats, you know? You know, you sneak in a little up and down, and then you go, tick, 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 tick. And you can do that real fast, and most people don't notice. Chad Aguilar noticed, though. <laughs> Chad would notice. Far left. I was wondering, uh, the band Raven, how, much, how influential was the band Raven on you guys as a thrash band growing up? How influential was the band Raven uh, on you guys as a thrash band growing up? Musically, they weren't. Okay. But, I mean, but as... As a band, they were one of our all-time favorites, yeah. you know. But I mean, I, that's not a bad thing, you know. We loved Raven, and I still do. But you know, for me as an influence, it was all about like uh, Venom, Merciful yeah. Fate, Discharge, Motorhead, of course. You know, yeah. Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Angel Witch, you know, um, Diamond Head, yeah. Ted Nugent, one of my heroes, you know, and. Uh, and, and a million more, there's too many to count. And it's just a big, it's a big pot, a big stew that you just stir up and you spill it on the floor and uh, vacuum it up and empty the bag and you had Exodus, you know? So. All right, right there, sunglasses. What's it like going, playing more melodic, kind of like with Exodus and going into full on thrash with, with Nick Slater? For the stream, what's, the diff uh, what's it like playing from something more melodic in Exodus than going from full on with Slayer? Um, well, I mean, I do a lot of melody in Slayer, and it, if you listen to like the early Slayer records, you know, like uh, Show No Mercy in particular, there's a lot of melody on that stuff, and, and it's underrated how much melody Jeff had in his playing. And so I, I try to keep some of the little key, little signature things he does, and, and then I do my own shit. But you know, I mean, I improvise like constantly on stage with Slayer. Sometimes that works to my advantage, sometimes it doesn't, because uh, some, you know, on a, any particular night, I may like just really like 
drop a like solo I'm so stoked with, and I know two seconds after it's, after it's over, I'll never replicate it again. Uh, I have no idea what I did, and that was killer. And then I'll, it's like chasing the Holy Grail, you know. I'll never get it back, you know. And, and there's nowhere to go but down. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do one more question. Then we're gonna get into something really fucking cool, like just something that you probably have never seen before. So right there, uh, yeah, you had your arm up the longest. Do you ever miss playing with Rick Honnold? Absolutely, Rick's, Rick's a, he's a brother from another mother, and uh, he was always the most talented musician in Exodus. The guy was a monster funk bass player. I mean, you know, he, I watched him, we did it one show once with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, of all people, you know, the Kaiser. Chili Peppers at, at the Henry J. Kaiser. Right. And at Soundcheck, Flea's tech let Rick play his bass, and Flea was popping on that thing, and Flea stopped the look. And Rick Hunel, if he, if he can smack on that thing and make the master stop and look at to see who the hell is doing it, that shows you how good he is. And he's also an amazing piano player. He's just awesome all-around guy, and he's a lunatic and a madman, and I love him to death.